judges present today with us are Mr. Greg Christianzi, uh, the general manager at Glendale, Mr. Bill Kennedy, director of service and sales support at Glendale, Mr. Mark Brookles, the vice president investor relations at Penning International, uh, Mr. Brian Levenpine, the president and director of Argentine Tax, co-CEO of MD Clinics, and co-founder and CFO of Live Care Health Canada. <coughs> Mr. Bob Elton, the Chief Risk Officer at Van City. Mr. Mark Akimichuk, the Managing Director at CMLS Financial, as well as Mr. Tom Wong, the Senior Advisor at HSBC. Audience, please turn off your mobiles and refrain from using them during the presentation. In addition, please do not leave the room or make any disruption, disruption for any reason. After the question and answer period, uh, uh, there will be 10 minutes allocated to judge deliberation. Each presentation is 20 minutes long, followed by 15 minutes of question and answer. Any time not used for the presentation will be reallocated to question and answer. For the presentation, the timer will be giving visual reminders at the 5 and 1 minute marks. When there are 15 seconds remaining, the timer will be signaling presenters through arm gestures. Presenters will be strictly cut off when the presentation time has elapsed. <coughs> Judges, we again request that you not ask any new questions during the last minute of the question and answer period. Please note that the presentations and question and answer periods will also be recorded. Presenters, you may now start when you're ready. Glentel has a key strategic mission to be a global leader in service integration. However, our research indicates that in urban areas, there are already major established players within service integration. They have major contracts with the biggest of telcos. But we did identify an exciting growth opportunity for your organization today, and that is servicing underserviced SMEs in rural locations which already fits with your existing core competencies. Welcome. My name is Ryan, and I'm here with my colleagues, Sheridan, Celeste, and Ying. We're here from Rural Consulting to present to you the Rural Service Integration Strategy. Now, today's strategy was formed through three key drivers. The first being a decrease in your hardware sales, which represents 65% of your revenues throughout your business division. Now, what this means is that in the short term, to ensure profitability, you need to leverage your wireless backhauling capabilities to provide rural communities with complete service integration to differentiate yourself from competition and to ensure you diversify your revenue stream. Now our second key driver, sorry, the result of that strategy will be an increase in net operating profits of $750,000 by the beginning of 2017. Now our second key driver is the increasing competition <coughs> which you face in your hardware sales. That's coming from two places. The first of which are your suppliers direct selling, and the second is the threat of substituting technology. Now what this means is that in the long term, in order to ensure growth and profitability, you must move your dependence away from the hardware sales and into a holistic services, namely M2M expansion, which will allow you to build service integration for oil and mining communities in rural areas. Now, doing so will ensure that your organization receives a 25% compound annual growth rate and net operating profits by the end of 2023. And then finally, as I identified earlier, you are facing a crowded urban market in service integration. Now, if you want to become a global leader, you need to ensure that you stick to a high-intensity niche market. That is small and medium enterprise in rural areas. Once you've established yourself as the domestic leader, you can then utilize your expertise and go international with consulting expansion. Now these three strategies together will ensure by the end of 2020, the value is passed on to your shareholders in a 15 cent increase in earnings per share. If we take a second to look at your current business model, as you can see, it's divided into LMRS, in your business division is LMRS and wireless backward. Looking at LMRS, this is your short, short term growth. This is because the market is facing volatility from the threat of entrance and the threat of a decreasing market share. 
Now you must sustain, you must ensure that you sustain this growth in the short term in order to ensure that it continues into the long term. Now looking at your wireless backhaul, this is where you will make your long term growth. As you can see, 80% of your clients are small and medium enterprises. Wireless backhaul is a perfect solution to give them integrated services in their rural areas. When considering a strategy, we looked at four main ones. The first was a vertical integration or acquisition. But unfortunately, given your current financial state, this is not, this is not the most appropriate model in the short term. Looking at full consulting operations, that is moving away from hardware and into consultation. It would be remiss of us to advise this, given the fact that your hardware division is still returning 18 to 20% annually. A partnership with Apple, your new biggest partner. Unfortunately, Apple has a too high price point and cannot customize to the level that your small, medium enterprise clients require. So that led us to service integration leadership in rural communities. This will allow you to leverage your current core competencies in order to capitalize on this exciting market trend. So how exactly are we going to transition Glentel into this exciting, high-intensity, high growth niche specialisation within the service integration area at rural areas. We'll be doing this through two areas. We'll be using your resources, your knowledge, your products and your services to help answer the most important questions facing rural communities not only in Canada but in the rest of the world. These questions are how can you produce sustainable and high quality broadband services within rural communities and how can you provide high quality life saving services and health care within rural communities. We'll be answering these two strategies, these two questions through these tactics. Connecting Canadians, which will leverage the digital 150 growth strategy, and connecting couriers, which will solve common problems within this area and leverage the communication radio-based system to provide these doctors with the support they need in critical mission situations. So let's first have a look at connecting Canadians. The Canadian Digital 150 strategy has the goal of increasing the quality of internet in 98% of rural communities to 5 megabytes per second. They're doing this by rolling out grants of 50 to 75 percent um, to the ISP providers who are targeting local and regional areas. We believe that this is a perfect growth opportunity for you because it meets the short-term implementation schedule of five years. Additionally, you are a perfect match for the government's criteria. The first criteria is technical requirements. You provide backhauling solutions that other telcos going up to these standards do not provide. In terms of durability and reliability, you do have a reputation in the industry of using the highest quality equipment. And also within the project management, you have a proven track record of implementing projects of this size in the past. Finally, in regards to the third um, criteria, which is the fourth criteria, which is open access, you do have a partnership with Bell and Rogers, so you will be able to open access of these systems. <coughs> In order, to, in order to secure the success of your tenders, we do recommend partnering with Rogers. This will give you, but um, you will receive benefits from this, and Rogers will also receive benefits. In terms of Blanta, uh, you have a well-known and trusted brand behind you in terms of your pitch application, and you're also personally interested in expanding into rural areas. For Rogers, they do have 50% ownership of the retail arm, which means they're interested in sustaining success in this brand, and it's also a current priority for them. So currently they're looking at accessing rural communities in terms of internet access through portable, port portable internet devices. But by partnering with you for this tender application, they will be able to receive wider application at a lower cost point. Finally, it gives them the opportunity to increase goodwill and customer sentiment in these rural markets. So we also have a look at what areas Lentel should target when putting in these tender applications. In red on, these, on the screen is the underserviced rural areas that government will support through grants. We believe that the best way to get strategic value out of this investment is to concentrate in areas that have the highest concentration of oil, money, and gas clients. That means that 14% of your clients are in the BC region, 64% are in Alberta, and 9.7% within Saskatchewan. Thank you. 
have to travel 100 kilometers or more to access high quality health care services from the doctor or a specialist. Within this medical mission market, this is not appropriate given the life or death consequences. So how can um, Glantel provide solutions to relieve the pressure from this area? They can do it through their LMRS um, solutions as well as their wireless backhaul solutions. Within LMRS, they have the opportunity to create a communication network based off their radio technology that will connect these regional hospitals with specialists in urban and other regional areas to make sure they have the support and the instruction to get through these critical mission situations. We'll be implementing the rollout of this um, communication system by working with provincial government and also with non-profit organisations in the regions. In terms of the wireless battle solutions, this also provides significant value in this area because it gives these uh, consumers in regional areas the opportunity to access e-health or the opportunity to sit down and have a video conference with a physician instead of travelling the hundred plus kilometres. It also has the rich media capability, which means they can send photos or videos of their ailments to get a good diagnosis. This solution will be rolled out in the three provinces we outlined earlier in the digital one strategy. So in terms of implementation, we will be planning and collaborating in the first year, then rolling out in 2016. So now that you're a market leader within the rural communities, you need to diversify your product offerings and look to provide new services for your customers. Now you can do this through expanding your M2M offerings. So we recognise that the LMRS market is highly competitive with three main threats. The first of these is direct competitors, so other resellers. Now due to the fact that you are sourcing your products from the same suppliers, you have limited opportunity for uh, product differentiation. The next uh, threat is the manufacturers. Now, due to the, the manufacturers are now beginning to sell their products directly to consumers. And due to the fact that they do not need to use a wholesaler, they can uh, incorporate a limited markup, which means that you'll be competing with these uh, manufacturers on price. The third threat is the telecommunications providers. Now, the telecommunications providers are investing resources into developing push to talk technologies. Now, this is seen as a substitute for your product, and it's also perceived by consumers to be of a cost benefit. Now, due to these three factors, we can see that you need to diversify from pure reselling in order to remain competitive within this market. So now let's have a look at Airtel. Airtel is a recently developed brand within the Glentel family, um, and you offer tailored solutions to LMRS uh, clients. Now you offer both products and services, as well as industry-specific uh, tailored needs. Now we recommend focusing on the oil and gas segment. So why do we recommend this? We can see that currently 80% of your revenues come from small to medium-sized enterprises. Now this means that you have vast experience within this segment, you know how these companies operate, and you know how to build relationships with them. In addition to this, we can see that 99% of gas and oil companies are SMEs. Now this means that you have the opportunity to meet their complex needs and to provide tailored solutions, which is one of your key objectives. And finally, 55% of your customers are already within the oil and gas industry. Now this means that not only can you provide services to new clients, but you can also add additional value to your existing clients. Now, the reason why we have highlighted these three figures today is because we see that they are your core competency. And we know that in order to grow successfully, you need to expand within this segment. So what are you currently offering to your oil and gas customers? At the moment, you have three main branches. First, environmental protection solutions, machine-to-machine -machine services, and exploration communication technology. We recommend expanding the machine-to-machine -machine services. The reason for this is because there is currently a 21% compound annual growth rate in machine-to-machine -machine technologies within the oil and gas segment. This provides enormous opportunities for innovation within this segment and also allows you an opportunity to differentiate yourself from your competitors. So what are you doing currently within the m 2 market? At the moment, you're providing starter services. Now, starter services are monitoring services which require human intervention to uh, change well levels. However, this is a rather or relatively basic technology and is being offered by a number of your competitors. So we suggest in 
investing in M-Track technology. Now, M-Track builds upon the SCADA technology of the electronic flow monitoring, but it also incorporates surface control facilities and fully automated optimization. So what this means is that wells can be monitored and adjusted as necessary without the need for human interaction. In addition to this, there are a number of different uh, innovation options that you could also explore, such as well testing, measurement, and performance improvement. Now, by providing these services to your clients, you will be allowing them the opportunity to gain cost benefits. And in addition to this, you will also be positioning yourself as a holistic service provider within the LMRS industry. So how do you gain the expertise you need to conduct your, LM, uh, your MR, M2M technology um, expansion? We recommend headhunting R&D managers from successful M2M companies. And we've identified a number of key traits that you could look for in a potential candidate, as well as three main companies that you could headhunt from. So these companies are all leaders within the M2M oil and gas segment, um, and they also provide an opportunity for you to gain that expertise. Now, if by doing this, you'll be positioning yourself as a market leader within M2M &M technologies and holistic solutions for LMRS. So how will we implement this part of the strategy? Over the first two years, you'll be looking at sourcing your manager, undertaking your research and development, and then integrating these products as part of your current offering. The next remaining three years will be a process of monitoring as well as keeping an eye on any new innovations within the industry. From the first two tactics, your company will have the opportunity to be the leading provider within the rural com community in the digital communication services. Next, how are we going to bring this expertise and knowledge to another level, which is extend internationally? But there are a few key criteria that we identified within the internet international market within your company. At the moment, you have three available options to expand overseas. The LMRS equipment, wireless overhaul, overhaul solutions and consulting. First two solutions will not be viable because firstly, you have a non compete clause with your local manufacturers such as Motorola where you can't bring equipment into overseas market. And second, for the solution, wireless solution, you have a big risk as you don't have the scale and experience within internationally. Last option will be the most viable at the moment because you have the skills and expertise and it's easy to execute internationally. We have identified a few countries and a few key criteria within your international expansion. These countries are located within these countries are developing countries located within the Asia and Oceania region. We have identified these few countries because Despite the economic downturn, they are still focused on the oil and gas production within this whole industry. However, the main key driver for us to choose Malaysia is because the ease of doing business. This country has been ranked as number 18 in the world business ranking, and with that, the physics growing and leverage our expertise within these developing countries, where technology might not be as high as developed country. To do that, we will identify independent firms where our core competency lies. We are, we are majoring in, your company is majoring in small and, and, small and medium enterprise, <laughs> where companies like have a high risk of special, specializing, they have 11 to 50 employees, and they also explore in oil and gas fields where your expertise lies too. Lastly, both companies can leverage their core competency and add value to each other, add value to each other international expansion. However, international expansion requires risk. And we have identified two key areas of risk where we have known that volatility of the business and industry is very important. Hence, we need to roll out this as soon as possible to secure these consulting contracts within these developing countries. Next factor will be your lack of cultural knowledge within these different countries. Hence, we recommend to hire in house experts when you can locally integrate and um, locally integrate and consult you within the cultural aspect of that. We will roll this out by second by the second part of 2015 and for the first establishment and second establishment in 2016 and 2017. If we look at the <coughs> financial implications of the strategy, during the whole process we're aware that like every business strategy, there's bound to be some uncertainties. 
So when we did our financial analysis for this strategy, we were able to narrow down the key uncertainties. From there, we set a range of variables and we were able to model them on based on thousand simulations. And what we found is that in a general worst case scenario, your organization is looking at making six million dollars net profit by the end of 2020. This comes from a $900,000 initial investment and will be received on a 1.5 year payback period. But most importantly, this value is directly returned to the shareholders. As you can see, we assumed an organic EPS growth rate for the organization of 5%, uh, a 22% earnings per share compounding growth rate for the strategies, which will result in an end earnings per share of 30 days. Looking back at what we've taken you through today, we have, we have developed a strategy that will allow Glentel to position themselves as the global leaders in the rural service integration market. Now doing so will ensure that your organization receives $750,000 in net profit by 2017, a 25% compound annual growth rate for profits by 2020, and an additional increase of 15 cents per share. We thank you for your time and welcome any questions you might have. As you can see, uh, the final assumption down there, we're assuming a securement of approximately 2.5 to 6% of non-service rural home. Now we developed that figure based on the uh, data of unserviced homes that the Canadian government has released. Uh, and we match that data, um, those homes, to the proximity of oil and gas in the area. So we decided to focus on targeting about, I think it was 30% of the unserviced homes in total, and we would like we would like an uptake rate of between two and a half and six percent. And then you can push this over the next one. So the end-to-end -end sensitivity analysis, uh, as you can see, we are targeting, so initially it would just be five percent, and we are targeting um, a market share of I suppose all of their operations. Uh, from there we will we'll looking to move towards uh, five organizations roughly the same size, and that's how we built out those revenue projections. And then you can to the next slide, please as well. Oh sorry, that was the next slide, please go back one. Thank you very much. And yes, the end to end solutions. So we issue well, we're targeting an uptake rate in your existing in your existing customers about twenty five percent for these additional efficiency processes, in which scenario we do the well, your organization with the installation for them. And then in the new customers, we would like to see 15% of your new customers <coughs> adapt this end to end. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So I would just take you from the top to bottom. So our first strategy, if you can go that one. Perfect. So you can see the initial cost at the top there. 
And that is developed or that was extrapolated from an Albertan, uh, the Albertan provincial government's uh, white paper, in which they released, they attempted to set up backhaul networks around uh, a small percentage of hospitals in Alberta. Now, that was approximately $150,000 for them to set up those networks, but we were expecting uh, operations about double that size. So that's why we built in uh, approximately $325,000 So I wonder, two-part question, is there 